I've used a lot of laptops and PCs in my life, both Windows-based laptops, older Apple laptops, and look, don't get me wrong, I'm not an Apple fanboy or anything like that. Not that there's anything wrong with that. In fact, the pretty much the only Apple product that I own is this laptop, and I do have an older set of AirPods, but I don't really use them that much anymore. Look, I've been rocking Android since the iPhone 3GS was out, and I've been using this Oppo for the last three years. But I will tell you this, when you're looking at overall total package, there is nothing that can beat an Apple laptop, in my opinion, so don't come for me. Now, at the time of making this video, the M5 MacBook Pro is up for pre-order and it's probably going to be released by the time you do see this, but I'm in no rush to grab one because this M4 has been doing all I needed to do and so much more over the last three months, but Look, I won't lie, it was a little bit of a rocky start and I was pretty much ready to return it within the first week of grabbing it. I previously had an M2 MacBook Pro with only 8GB of RAM, so it would lag a lot when I had DaVinci and Notion and a few Chrome tabs open at the same time. I needed something that could fully handle my workflow without slowing down, so it was time to upgrade. And one of the main reasons I made that jump was for better export times. I use the free version of DaVinci Resolve to edit every video that's on my channel and while I know the paid version version can give a boost to exporting times as it gives the ability to you know use a little bit more GPU power to export faster. I've never had the need to use any of the paid features that the software provides and editing on my PC which has a 3060 Ti with most projects exports in like 5 or 6 minutes which isn't really that big of a deal for me. On my M2 Pro it used to take about 10 to 11 minutes or so for the same project so seeing all the benchmark performance hype online about the M4 chip I figured yeah it's time for an upgrade let's get a bit more efficient workflow but surprisingly now those same projects while they are faster they hit around nine minutes or so which isn't that much more and it's still slower than the rtx 3060 paired with the i5 14600k and that's pretty much where my regret kicked in i almost returned the laptop but then i kept using it and i'm really glad that i did because this macbook has been able to handle pretty much everything that i've thrown at it with my workflow Something which my previous M2 8GB version couldn't really handle. After a little while, it'll all start to get laggy and started to hiccup, right? But let's say, for example, if I'm researching for some information on the videos that I'm going to be making and I've got like 20 Chrome tabs open, I've got Notion running as well, Claude going in the background, and then when I start to edit things and I've got DaVinci running and I've got background apps like PacePal running, um, I'll have local send, I'll have KDE connect. I'm really in the zone between the laptop and my phone and it doesn't even so much as hiccup. While exporting times were like getting a hot poker in the eye at first, I've really come to like how smooth DaVinci actually runs on this MacBook, especially when playing and scrubbing through the timeline when trying to find sections of clips to cut and use, which on my PC can sometimes be a bit of an issue. And as of late, after a few minutes of use on PC, DaVinci stops playing anything. Like it won't even play through the timeline until you restart the program. And as you can imagine, when you're trying to edit a 10 to 15 minutes in a video that can take hours, restarting the program every 15 to 20 minutes is pretty annoying. Working full time and making weekly YouTube videos and short form content, I haven't got time for any of that. So I found myself using the MacBook more and more and I'm glad I stuck with it. Now let me talk about the decisions I made when buying this thing. But before I do, guys, if you're enjoying the video, don't forget to drop a like and sub to the channel to join our growing community on our road to 5K. So yeah, as I was saying, at the time of getting this laptop I really didn't want to go over a budget of 2800 Australian dollars which is about 1800 US and the laptop retails here for 2500 Australian dollars so with a few hundred dollars left I had a choice to make which was either to go with the new nano texture display or increase the RAM to 24 gigabytes up from the base 16. The benefit with the nano texture display would mean that you could use your laptop outdoors and near bright windows without copying much or really any glare at all but the downside is that people who have had it, they say that they tend to lose some of the richness that the display can offer. Now I don't use my laptop full on outdoors all that often and near windows if I ever hit a glare on the screen I guess I have to go through the massive effort of either tilting my screen a few degrees or rotating the laptop a bit to cut it out but that's a task that I'm willing to take on. <laughs> Look, 
Instead, as a creator, I went with the RAM upgrade because I need this laptop to perform, but more on that a little bit later. Overall, the Liquid Retina XDR display with ProMotion is exceptional, especially when I've got it set to Apple XDR Display P3 preset, which is optimized for the display's full capability. You can change the display preset to many other options based on the task that you're doing, which can come in handy for you working professionals who need a little bit more from the display. It also supports up to 1600 nits bright which is so freaking bright and to be honest I've never used it at max brightness I've never really had the need to I also do have ProMotion enabled which lets the display hit up to 120 Hertz refresh rates when supported and you can really tell the difference in how smooth everything looks I'm quite happy with the glossy display myself and look realistically yes I do get reflections every now and again but it's not a deal breaker to me, the vibrance of the screen outweighs the glares as editing photos and videos accurately is more important, but not just for work. Even watching movies or YouTube, the display does not disappoint at all. Another thing that doesn't disappoint is the battery. Like I'll tell you, I'm using this laptop for work, research, note taking, or even just browsing. I'll easily, easily get seven to eight hours of minimum from this laptop. I've even had instances of nine hours plus. If you add up all these little blue bars, you'll get that total, trust me. <laughs> But this is basically a whole day with my workflow majority of the time. And yes, look, if you're spending an entire session editing videos or editing photos, that number will drastically reduce. But charging time through MagSafe with the upgraded 96 watt charger when not using the laptop takes about 90 minutes. And I usually do tend to do this as number one, when charging and using the laptop at the same time, it gets super freaking hot, which on warmer days is annoying as. And number two, I use timers while working to remind me to take breaks, which I often snooze, especially when I'm in the zone. But if I close the laptop to charge it, I can take at least a decent 90 minutes away. And in that time, I'll either have to leave the house or watch some TV or play a game and decompress. Look, I don't like leaving it on charge overnight because I don't want the battery to prematurely wear out, but I can't fully avoid this as editing eats away at the battery a little bit quicker so I will have to have constant power connected to it at times when I'm in the zone editing so that I don't run into any nasty surprises when I'm super focused halfway through a project. Other than with MagSafe, you can charge a laptop through one of the three USB-C ports which are all Thunderbolt 4. So with the right SSD transfer speeds are pretty insane. You can also hook up external displays to these ports with cables that support USB-C DP alt mode. One thing I don't like though, and I know I'm going backwards here, but no USB a ports means that I often find myself having to use adapters or docks just so that I can use some of my peripherals. One thing I do like is that there is an AUX jack. I have wireless earbuds and sometimes I can't be bothered having to fiddle around with repositioning and refitting them in my ear often. So being able to use something like my Sennheiser HD 599 headphones with a laptop is a pretty big win in my book. There's also a HDMI out port too, which can come in handy to set up a single external display. And the SD card slot also comes in handy when I need to extract files from my cameras quicker than what their on-body USB transfer speeds will allow. And let's not forget about the six speaker system in this MacBook, which is absolutely phenomenal. It sounds way better than any laptop speakers that I've ever used before, including the M2 MacBook Pros. And when you're watching movies or YouTube videos, the audio has this depth and direction that's honestly really surprising. I can tell you that watching films on this thing feels immersive in a way that is particularly mind-blowing for laptop speakers. So circling back to the decision of upgrading the RAM, over the nano display as a content creator i need this laptop to perform just as strong or if not stronger than my pc and for the most part it has been like i've never run into a hiccup and a lot of that has to do with the upgraded ram i had an m2 macbook pro which had eight gigabytes worth of ram and the moment that you had notion da vinci and honestly more than three or four chrome tabs open that thing would start to lag and crash and look when the m2 came out eight gigabytes of ram may have been acceptable by the standards back then but it definitely isn't today so it was definitely time for that upgrade. So when I decided to grab the M4 MacBook Pro, I thought it's best I future-proof myself from now and I went with the 24 gigabyte RAM upgrade. As you can see here, running Notion, Excel, OBS, Claude, Chrome with a bunch of tabs, 
and the Vinci all together is using less than 50% of the system's RAM and all lines are green. When the system starts to feel the pressure like when you're editing photos in Lightroom, the RAM graph will start to show yellow and when it's really stressed out, like most of us, it turns red. Now having more performance power with this upgrade means that I can use this wherever I want for my entire workflow and I no longer need to save my project halfway through and tether myself back to my desk. I can continue to work on my videos either on the couch with a movie or YouTube video playing in the background or even at a local cafe. And look, I'll be honest and say that the weight is a little bit more than I was expecting for the laptop, but it's not overwhelming, so carrying it around if you're heading out for the day isn't really a problem. You can easily pop it into a carry sleeve or a bag and be on your way. But the freedom from the desk is the second biggest reason that I upgraded. On the M2, at one point or another, I always had to go back to my desk to my PC to finish projects as that started to slow down. And that meant between researching, scripting, and editing, I was at my setup for hours a week confined to a smaller room and that was starting to drive me a little bit insane. I still tend to do most of my scripting on my desk setup so I'm not distracted but being able to complete the rest of my workflow wherever the heck I want has been a game changer for me mentally. I've also been using this Samsung T5 portable SSD with my MacBook for any current projects that I'm working on because if I really want to, I can easily jump between my devices without having to worry about transferring files. Now, one thing worth mentioning is that I've been using this MacBook with my Android phone for the last three months, and honestly, it's been smoother than I expected. Look, don't get me wrong, it's not seamless, but it's smooth. I use LocalSend to transfer files between my Oppo and MacBook wirelessly, and it's pretty much as great as AirDrop would work with an iPhone, except you always need to be on the same Wi-Fi connection but it works well enough for my workflow. I can send screenshots, project files, and any images without needing cables or cloud uploads, which for me, it's perfect. I've also got apps like KDE Connect set up to copy and paste text between the two devices, and I've got the desktop versions of WhatsApp and Texty so that I can access all my texts. The build quality of the laptop is absolutely solid and the space black color is so much nicer and richer in person than the videos can do any justice. I've been super careful with it though, even down to how I attach the MagSafe charger just so that I can make sure that I don't scratch the body. At my work, I use an M3 MacBook Air and it's in that midnight blue colorway and it's at best about a year old, but the body body on this thing is smashed, it's scratched to the daylights. So naturally, I baby my own laptop as much as I can. Then there's the magic keyboard which we all know and love, and as much as I love typing on mechanical keyboards, there's no complaints here, unlike the fingerprint situation. The space black finish shows fingerprints constantly on the body, and you can wipe it off, but naturally with use, they come right back. After three months, I've just accepted that it's part of the process and honestly, it kind of gives the laptop a little bit of character, like as if there's a patina forming over time. Now I've gotten more and more into editing on the MacBook Pro and I am enjoying the portability factor, but sometimes, you know, like you just, you need a second monitor and an external mouse to help speed up the process. So I'm planning a second setup right here in the living room and it's not going to be anything over the top. I'm obviously going to move all of this stuff from here. Just a simple desk, something that's going to be really productivity focused. I'll have a small desk, a monitor, a mouse and a USB dock, but that's pretty much going to be all. The speakers on the laptop are more than amazing. And like I said before, I've always got my Sennheiser headphones that I can plug in when I need for focused listening. Honestly, there are times where I want to get super focused and I need to pump out an edit with minimal distractions and sitting laid back on a couch while comfortable doesn't equal efficient, at least for me. Plus being here in the living room has kind of a different vibe compared to my usual desk setup. It's kind of more cozy with the warmer colors opposed to the cooler vibe in there. So I'm hoping it will provide for a different overall experience while working. So be sure to stay tuned for that setup build coming up. It's currently still in the planning phase. So I'll hopefully have that video out early in the new year. So after three months with the M4, here's my honest take with it. Despite my initial disappointments with export speeds, the positives with this thing far outweigh that one single negative in my opinion. The workflow smoothness, the battery life, the display, the freedom from my desk, it all really comes together as a solid package. And would I buy it again? 
Yeah, absolutely. Now with the M5 practically being out by the time that you're watching this video, the question remains of who should be buying the M4? Well, if you're after the latest piece of tech, as a matter of a couple of days, this isn't gonna be for you, let's be honest, right? But let's say like you're after an amazing machine that'll handle a lot that you can throw at it, like literally everything that I've thrown, productivity work, photo editing, video editing, general browsing, Heck, if you're a student, this is going to be perfect for you. Um, you should definitely be keeping your eyes on your local retailers to see if there's going to be a decent discount on these machines now. Any of your local retailers that have stock M4 Pros at the moment, they're going to start discounting them just so that they can get rid of them, right? And especially with Black Friday sales around the corner, you'll be able to pick this up for a pretty decent price within the next couple of weeks. Anyway, guys, that's pretty much it from me. So thank you. Thank you very much for watching the video. If you did enjoy it, please drop a like and consider subscribing to the channel to you know join our growing community on our road to 5k and yeah thanks again i'll catch you on the next one